Hello everyone. Welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting a very nice, very fun, very simple winter scene called Warmth of Winter. Basically, we're going to just have some fun, push around a few colors and be creative. So before we get started, why don't we take a quick look at all the equipment that's laid out and the equipment that you get with a J. Robinson Art painting packet. First off, you get this very nice set of brushes that comes with a variety of different sizes. You get the colors that you need for the project, which today's colors are going to be yellow, white, green, black, and red. I've squeezed out enough colors for you to be able to visually see them, but we probably won't use all of this that we have here. So when you get yours, you don't have to squeeze out the entire tube, but squeeze enough so you can do your project and you could always add more. Off to my right, I have a cup of water, which you may want to have or get. We provide you with a half sheet, a palette sheet right here that you can put your paint on, but of course you can use styrofoam plates or a real palette. We also give you a paper towel, we provide you with a spatula to help remove your peels. And let's take a look at our project for today. This is what it looks like. Very fun, very easy, very simple. I'm gonna be showing you this project. With a paint and peel project, you can add more if you'd like. You could take away if you'd like. The idea is that some of the images are blocked off for you so that it'll make it easy for you to know where positions are and to be able to even create those items or areas or images. But you're not limited to that. You can create whatever you like. This just happens to be the project we'll be painting today. What we provide you with is, in this case, an eight by 10 canvas panel with the peels affixed. Now these projects come in a variety of different packages. You can get a canvas panel, you can get an 8x10 stretch canvas, you can get an 11x14 stretch canvas, you can get a 16x20 stretch canvas. Anything higher than that, we like to consider that custom. You can uh, go on our website and order that or give us a call and we'll be happy to provide you with the pricing for those. We also do bags and boxes and wood and all types of different kits are available. Again, you can go to peeloff.com to see all the variety of different kits that we have available. Now, off to the right here, I have a series of brushes, some old beat up brushes that have been very friendly to me that I'm gonna be using for this project. But the brushes that we provide or maybe the brushes that you have at home will suit you just fine for any and every project that we give you. We just like to make sure we provide you with everything that you need. You also get a plastic apron that you can use to help protect yourself. So now with that being said, let's get down to the project at hand. The first thing we're gonna do is put in a basic background. So I'm gonna take me a nice flat brush. I'm gonna pick up a touch of white, a little bit of yellow, and maybe to about here on this side, and maybe over on this side, I'm just gonna paint in a very nice, yellow, bright, warm, background, which gives this painting the name Warmth of Winter. Now, there's a couple of things I want to make sure you understand. The peel is just there to block off the area, so you have to make sure you paint over it. Don't try to paint around it. And also, in this instance, we'll be putting some snow down here, so we're not going to be painting yellow down below because we all know, especially growing up, yellow snow is not your friend. So basically in a painting project, it's not your friend either, unless you wanted to highlight a little warmth and then you'd have to know the limitations of doing something like that. So see how fast and how quick and how easy I've already put in the background color. Now without cleaning my brush, I'm gonna tap into a tiny bit of green, move that over here a little bit, have the yellow to make it a light green so I'm looking for a very, very light green kind of a color. And over here, I'm just gonna tap to make some tree tops for some distant tree shapes. And the way I do this is see how my brush is already kind of open and beat up? I just tap until I can look to see 
those type of things right there. You see those at the top? Those are going to be my tree lines or my tree tops. So I'm just going to tap until I can get some of those um, jagged edges at the top. And then the rest, I'm just going to tap in and fill. Because this is just background stuff. But see, it gives the impression of some distant trees. Taking that same light color. And I'm just going to tap me some shapes. I don't care if it fades out because I do want it to be kind of light. Mixing up a little bit more green and a touch of yellow just to give me a nice light green tone. And then I'm just going to continue to tap me some shapes. See, the importance of these shapes is so important that once I get them, I don't really go back into it. See, and that's good enough. Now, the rest down here, I'm just going to fill. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, why don't you just brush stroke it? I tend to think like the item. So if I'm making trees, they're in clumps. So if I tap, it's going to give me though that look of clumps. If I paint it, it might be too flat. And I don't want that. So I'm not going to allow myself to get too comfortable and simply just brush stroke myself away when I can get some of these nice um, patterns by just tapping and adding a little bit more color as I need, keeping it light, and then just tapping myself into a finish. Now this right here is not a hard painting, it's not a long painting. I'm just trying to give you some ideas as we're painting though. All right, so there. So now I have my tree line, I have my supposed sun of warmth, my light green color, and I'm gonna clean off my brush. Dip it in the water, stir it like chicken soup. I like to call this ringing the bell. I tap the brush from side to side to shake off the paint. Another tip, a lot of people crumple up their paper towel. I tend to fold mine and I just wipe my brush like so. Cause it helps bring the brush back to some sense of point flatness. In this case, this brush has really been through a lot but I'm not getting rid of it has a purpose. And then I put that off to the side. Now what I wanna look at is where I'm gonna go next is down in this area. Cause down in here is where the snow is. At least I wanna look at that. But I also need to put in the darker version of the tree here. So what I'm trying to look at now is knowing that I'm gonna be making this a dark version of the tree, I wanna come down here and start putting some clumps of grassy things that are going to be just as dark as this tree so that when I go to put in the snow I know where I'm going now what I just said may not make any sense to anyone but I like to say follow the process and it'll lead you right to the finish so I'm going to take this little flat brush right here I'm going to pull a little bit of black black's a very strong color and then I'm gonna grab more green and I'm just going to kind of stir this up a little bit what I'm trying to achieve right now is a darker green. Just enough to make it stand up a little bit darker than the green that we provide. This is your choice. This is your mixture. You don't have to do this. You can just go with straight green or you can get a different two color green. So now right down in here in this area, I know that there's going to be a little bit of this tree showing through this pile of snow. So I'm just gonna tap in some color. Just tap in some color, see? Just a pattern of color, like that. Again, doesn't make sense right now, but it will in a little while. Grab a little bit more color, and maybe along this line over here, there's some grassy stuff that's gonna end up showing through the snow over here as well. Okay? And then perhaps even Right along here, I'm going to say that there's some stuff that's just kind of hanging out over here. And maybe there's a little bit more over here. Now I'm just looking at the negative space, meaning the white majority. And I'm just trying to break up the space down here. Maybe even right along this area here, there's some green stuff that's kind of right near this house or shed. And maybe there's even just a little bit right here. 
Now, if I want to have some fun, I can add some other tree shapes back here. So why don't we do that just to have some fun? Mix up a little color using just the corner side of my brush. I'm just going to tap in a tree line, a shape. See, I'm putting some more trees, but they're kind of right behind this shed a little bit, sticking up from the back of it. So I'm just going to literally come over, tap a little bit, just to create that look of those edges again, like we did up here, but a little tighter. And maybe I'll just come just a little bit down over here. And then maybe it just goes off the canvas over here. So there. So now I'll put a little something behind this shed just to give it a little bit of a look. And we'll add some snow here as well as on the roof. So now we're ready to make our first peel. Let me clean off my brush, ring the bell, wipe it on a paper towel. Move it off to the side. Now I'm going to grab my spatula. And with the spatula, I'm going to grab it around the neck, never at the tip. So I could get a good grip and I'm just looking to stick it under anywhere, anywhere that I could get it to start to peel up like there. See, take my nail now, which I don't have a lot of, but I'm going to grab it. See, now I'm just going to peel away. And there's the basic shape of the pine tree, which is all I really need to get me started. I'm going to go back to this small flat brush. And now I'm going to mix me up a little bit more of this darker green using a little bit of black and a lot of green. I'm just going to stir that around and get me a nice dark color. That's good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the shape and just start at the tip and work my way down and make the pine tree. Now I hope my hand and stuff doesn't get in your way. But if it does, I'll be gone in a few seconds and you'll see what I've done. I'm just tapping left and right, but I'm trying to visually think about a Christmas tree. Not a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, mind you, but one of those nice pine trees you either see at Rockefeller Center in New York City or during Christmas season in some of the offices that you go to or buildings that you pass. So I'm just tapping and creating that shape of a pine tree. And I'm going to keep creating that all the way down, all in this area here. So let me just grab a little bit more paint. I'm going to keep going. Now, even though the extension, those little lines aren't there, you can see that the grooves are. So they're kind of guiding you to tell you that you may want to have some that just protrude off the edge just a little. See, just a little. You don't want to go too far because this is the top part of the tree and I'm staying within the framework. Which again, the peel off is just a guide to help you find your way until you develop the painting skill set and comfortability to just do this 100% on your own. And I know a lot of times people have a tendency to use some of the craziest words in the world when it comes to art, like, oh, that peel off thing is cheating. Well, do a little history search. Learn about things called the camera obscura. Or take a good look at the Sistine Chapel and think about how an artist and his staff was able to create that by putting holes in a muslin cloth and pumicing it with powder to outline the images that the artist later on came and detailed and painted to make that beautiful Sistine Chapel that we see and love so much. So artists from many, many centuries and many, many decades, even using paint brushes themselves, have used tools to help them create some of the most beautiful works of art you admire and see today, but you see the finished product and you don't think about how they got there. Now, that's not everyone, but tools are a part of any kind of process. 
And it's a poor craftsman that blames his tools. But sometimes you need to use tools in order to help you expand, learn, be more creative. And that's all peel off is. It's a tool. It's a way of making it so that no matter what your skill level is, you can paint a finished product. That you could have fun being creative. That you can push around a few colors and come out with something that you like. That's representative of what you're doing at that moment. And at the same time, it's teaching you how to create things that you may later on not need that type of equipment for. But either way, it's meant to help. Not to hinder, not to cheat you, not to rob you, but to give you. It's like painting by numbers with no numbers. It's like painting a cartoon or a, a, a coloring book without the lines. You're able to look at this image and decide at some points what you want in it. You could eliminate this tree. You could add another one of these trees here if you like, or even back there if you like. You can make some shorter, longer. You can do a whole lot of different things with a peel off. So you're not limited to anything but your own creativity and imagination. And I say make use of anything that's gonna help you do that. Because art is a beautiful thing. It's very relaxing, it's very therapeutic, I've been doing it for years, decades even. And a lot of people say, oh, how could I paint like you or draw like you? Because I don't necessarily use peel off for everything that I do, but I do have fun with it when I'm teaching workshops and helping people like yourself enjoy the wonders of being creative. But I ask them, how many hours do you have? Some people don't have those kind of hours. So here's a great way to explore your creativity and not have to spend all of those hours as I have being creative. I'm just adding a little bit more down here because I just see this as being a little bit more. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to add in a few more little details and then I'm going to close this off and we're going to go into phase three of our operation. Where are we at? Phase four? Okay, so there's our pine tree. There's our distant little trees. These bushes don't make sense right now, but they're about to. So let me clean off my brush. Wipe it on, you know, bring the bell, wipe it on a paper towel. Okay. And now for purposes of the video, I'm just gonna switch to another flat brush so I don't have to clean this one thoroughly for you and we can keep going. Now I wanna add some snow down here. Normally, I tell people, don't paint really thick. But in this instance, it's okay if you do. So let's just start over here. We're going to pull some snow that's right over here next to this cabin. And all of this greenery that we made, we're going to paint around it. Like literally around it. Like, like as if you're enclosing it. Because this is snow that has drifted over a lot of this green stuff. And some of it is just sticking through. So even around the foot of the cabin, while we're going to come back and peel that off and paint it in a second, we're going to just drag snow all along the ridge lines, along the base of the tree, like so. And you see how I'm moving my hands to give it like little bitty wiggles? Because snow moves like that sometimes. And I'm just going to keep dragging and cleaning up the edges of my tree, planting it in the ground, if you will. And then just again, I'm going to go around all of this green stuff that we made. But you see this stuff right here? If that happens, leave it. Don't smooth it out. Let it be a snow drift. Let it be as if the wind blew that like that. So you can see that there's a lot of snow. So when things like that happen, you don't have to clean them up and make them all smooth and everything. Let it, let it have some of this jaggedness to it because it helps give the picture a little bit more character. 
The idea is that you're just going around all of this. You see how I'm not taking it out? I'm literally just painting around it. And I'm just letting some of these lines just stay as vivid as they want to be. Because it doesn't matter to me. It's fine. It's adding to my whole painting. And you see how after my brush starts to run out, I go and I grab some more paint. And I just keep going. Now, this is really starting to come together. This, to me, is doing exactly what I wanted to do right now. I'm very pleased with all of the line work. All of the thickness sticking up. Going around the images. Because this helps show you the snow. It helps your eye to visualize that there's a lot of snow here. Which is what we want. If you make it too smooth, eh, it's not going to show up this way. It's going to look like snow, but not as visual as some of this stuff is helping to make it look. So, And you can clean off your edges as you wish. This doesn't take a lot of time. I'm just going slowly and talking you through it so you can clearly see and understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, what it's doing, and how it's helping my picture come to life. See, more and more, this is really working for me. I'm just really purposely leaving it. Even here, I can go over this again and make it wider, taking out the green at the ends. Going around, moving my brush. Doesn't take a lot of time for this. But you just want to take your time, get it right. Don't go fussing around. Layer in some color and leave it. I call it letting it live. <laughs> Don't kill it. Let it live. Let some of this stuff live. Let these lines live. We don't know if the wind was blowing here a little while ago, then here a little while ago, then here a little while ago, then here a little while ago. It's wind. It was, could have been going all night long. There. That's good enough for me. Now, something else that you can do that I find to be very interesting Let's put some snow on our tree. And for that, I'm not going to put snow everywhere just yet. I'm going to pretend that some of this snow froze on some of these leaves and they're in clumps. So maybe there's a little bit here at the top. Maybe a little bit here on this side. I'm using like a stepladder approach over here. Then over here. So you see the rhythm I'm doing, how I'm kind of staggering it a little bit. And then maybe there's some over here. I'm just dropping in some clumps and I'm just leaving them. See? And I'm just going to keep coming down with that process until I look at my tree and I'm satisfied with its snow on it. Now I'm going to make it snow on the whole picture and then little specks will show up everywhere. But I want these for dramatic effect. I want these as if the snow landed on beds of the tree and just sat there and then got a little hard, turned into a little bit of an ice situation, if you will. As I get lower, I may be a little bit more creative with the clumps because it's wider. So I want to add a few extra uh, taps Maybe even right here, like so, and then come back here and go from the edge just to give more volume down in this area. And I'm almost completed with this. And at the base, I always like to add just a few little extra ones, leaving some of the green to show through still. But at the base area, I like to add just a few extra little pieces. Now there, there's my tree with the snow on it. So now let's do the same thing with some of these here. Just a few little dots here and there as if some snow on some of this grassy stuff is actually showing through. So you see I'm not spending a lot of time on it. Even here, just going to tap, tap, tap and get out. Now that's good enough for me. Our painting is almost done. I'm going to clean off my brush. Wipe it on a paper towel, grab my spatula, and I'm going to remove the cabin. 
And the same rule applies. I'm just going to go by the neck, peel up something, and then just peel away till my cabin is revealed. Just the shape. It's just the shape I'm looking for. At this point, you can use the flat brush. You could use a pointed brush. I say at this point, use a brush that's comfortable for you. And everything you see here gets painted red. So I'm just going to load up some red on this flat brush. And I'm just going to come in and maybe do the roof line. See, like that. A little trick is, I don't know if you've ever colored in coloring books, but sometimes you would do a tracing around the image before you actually colored inside of it. Well, you can do the same thing here. Just so you're not going over too far on your lines. Because you want to keep the shape that the peel is making for you. Because it'll help with the image. So there's the cabin outlined. Now I'm just going to take the paint. And I'm just going to paint inside. This I'm going to make a little lean. I'm not making this super thick. Because I want to come back and add some snow on the roof. I want to put some slats in the wood. And we're going to call this baby finished. So I'm just going to take my time here. Fill in the cabin. And I'm just going to tell you a couple of things after I finish this. That you could do with your painting if you desired. Because remember, I'm just painting the one you see in the instructions. You can add or take away any way or any time you want. So there's my cabin. My cabin is a back view. I'm going to pretend that there's no trail here. There's no walkway here. That everything is around the other side that you don't see. So I'm just going to pull my slats here. Right? And leave it. But you could put windows and a door. And even walk yourself a trail. You can put a big tree in front of this one. And make it so that it's like no leaves on it. You can add a big tree anywhere you want in this picture. You can put yourself some bird lines. As if birds are flying in your painting. But again, these are your choices. These are things that you can do with a peel off. That allows you to be creative. So now I'm going to take and put this brush down for a second. Pick up the pointed brush. You better add a little water to it. Turn it on a paper towel. Twist it into the black just a little bit. Just so I can get a point. And I'll begin pulling down some of those lines. Whether they're too super straight or not doesn't really matter. We don't know when this cabin was built. Who the builder was. Whether they were straight eyed or crooked eyed. It doesn't matter. We're just creating some lines. Just to give effect to the structure. As if there's slats of wood, if you will, okay? That's all these lines are representing. They've just given you a vertical. They've given the cabin extra color and design. There, okay. So now, my cabin lines are in. So lastly, what I want to add on this is some snow. So I'm going to take the brush, put some white on it. May take me a couple of passes, but right along the roof line here, I'm just going to start with a nice big clump and just drag right along the edge. Stop when I get to the top, put some more paint and clean off my brush just in case it picked up some red. Come down the other angle, and bam, now I have snow on my roof. And maybe because I'm such a stickler, Maybe I want to curl just a little something here as if the roof curled and the snow's kind of hanging off the edge. Maybe, just because I can, I want to come back in front of this barn or this shed and just re-identify the snow bank that's right in front of it. Making sure I clean up my line work and plant my cabin into a nice fresh bank of snow. Now, you can stop right here, but I'm not. I'm going to take this bristle, long head bristle brush, dip it into some water, 
just so you can see it's not a lot. And then I'm going to pounce that into the white paint like it's juicy. Maybe I add just a touch more water because I need it to flip off my finger. Like, you see all that juiciness right there? Oh, this is good. And then I'm going to take this brush with my finger and just bloop, 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 and make it snow. And I'm going to add snow everywhere. I'm just going to fill snow as much as I want all along the background. Maybe I'll grab a little bit more. And I'm just going to flick, flick, flick with my finger and create lots of snow all over my tree, all over my cabin, all over my painting. And this will help give the impression that it's snowing right now. So even with the snow that's already settled, I now have fresh falling snow over my entire painting. And for this, you can add as little or as much snow as you want. Try not to get the brush super wet because you'll end up with really big droplets unless that's what you want. And you don't have any control over what comes off the end of this. So you have to sometimes accept shooting stars, lines, or whatever may flip off. But for the most part, you're going to get this. And there. Our painting is complete. Well, as usual, thank you so much for allowing me to paint with you. I had fun, and I hope you did too. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all the alerts on some of the new projects that will get posted. And please visit peeloff.com. That's P-E-I-L-O-F-F. -F, so you can see the large variety of kits that we offer. Well, have fun, and until next time, take care. And again, thank you for allowing me to push around a few colors with you. And have some fun. Bye-bye.